Okay, welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Blind Mike. And I'm Morris. What? Hi, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> it has. I probably should have put more videos up, but life happened. Yeah, life happens. You know how that works. But we're going to try to correct that for today. Um, today, we're trying to promote a Kickstarter that's going on right now, which is, if everybody's watched our previous podcast, is at Aventuria. Uh, they're doing the end of the Black War. So what the hell is an In of a Black Boar, Mike? Oh, In of the Black Boar. Uh, apparently it was the very first adventure ever put out for first edition of the Dark Eye. And they're basically carrying it over to basically a new adventure into the card game. Okay. Now, um, why am I looking at Euros? <laughs> why am I you looking at what? <laughs> Euros. What? Euros. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're doing it. Uh, they're doing it in a multiple. Apparently now Kickstarter, you have to do it from your home country. You have to use your home country's uh, money system. So that's exactly why they're doing that. They give you a dollar equivalent though as well. So. Yep, I'm I'm learning all kinds of things today. Then I guess. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize they had to do that now too. But that's apparently that's the way it's going to be going coming forward. I guess so. But they have four different distribution centers for the card game. So. Hopefully, you know, shipping and stuff won't be as much because they have one in the United States, Australia, Europe somewhere, and I don't remember, Asia somewhere, I think. <clears throat> so there's four different distribution centers they're sending the, the new set from. So at least shipping and handling won't be as bad for some people, I hope. So this is after 7 o'clock, roughly, uh, on the day of recording, and there's 15 days left to go, so we're trying to get this one out as quick as possible. Yep, been um, up for five days now. <clears throat> and those of you who can see it on the screen might notice that this is already backed. Like, they, they've already got what they need. So it's kind of a gimme. Kind of. Working on stretch goals now, yep. Well. I know I, I myself have not pledged yet, but I'm looking at the count level, uh, which basically gives you a bunch of stuff. And some of the stuff I don't really need, but eh, I like this company, so I'm going to back them as much as I can. <laughs> So since you mentioned it, let's go on, go on down there. They sure. have it on the side, but they got the the graphic here is a little bit more detailed if I can find it. Probably a good idea. Oh, yeah, that's, also, that's I'm passing it. You can also add on like the core game and other things as um, other sets. Yeah, additional add-ons if you just wanna wanna go for that. I know one of the neater things I saw in this Kickstarter was the, the wooden trays that you can set up to put your game in, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly. Don't remember. Were they 40 bucks a piece, I think? Something like that? Or 30? Uh, so, yeah, they're 40 bucks a piece for the different wooden boxes. And from what I understand, if you have all the sets, you probably need two of those boxes to make sure you can fit it all in. But, I'm seriously tempted to get boxes, but I, it's a bit... But if you buy them all in a bundle, they appear to give you about 40 bucks off. So, I mean, how couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you get 25% off. It's seriously <laughs> tempting. I mean... But, uh, my wallet's so, not that huge most of the time. So, like, one of my criticisms of Dark Eye slash Adventuria as it's been going on, and one, one thing also for those of you watching, the, the, the difference, which, like, for... Viewers like our friend Doug, who is also part of the show, uh, the the Adventuria card game is not what pulls him in. It's the the D twenty Dark Eye that he wants to play. Yep. But like they've got amazing art, they just use it yes. a lot over and over again. <laughs> it's too bad my blind eyes cannot see them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hear the art's really decent with this system. Okay, oh, well. so new adventurer. So if 
as they say, this is the perfect reward to level to you. try it out. So it's fifty bucks. That's you get, you get in, you get the core game, second edition, and then basic stretch goals. So not a lot, but I mean, what do you expect at the price of just the core game normally retail? That's right? what the normal yeah normally retails at fifty anyways. Um, you get, like I said, you get the basic stretch goals, which are uh, two or three cards at this point, and some other minor things like some uh, fate point counters and that sort of thing. So you're going to actually get more if, you, but you know, you worry about paying shipping and handling too. So that's a way the extra stuff kind of makes up for the shipping and handling. Mm. So then you have in patron, you get the end of the black bore return to the end of the black bore as well as basic advanced stretch goals it includes core game upgrade. This is the basic reward level for Adventuria fans who want to get the new bar supplements. So you're just getting the new stuff. You don't get the core game unless you put it in as an add-on. And this is still one of the basic stretch or the basic under falls under the basic heading. So you get all the basic stretch goals for this as well. Then you get up to bar keep. You get the core game end of the black bore return to the end of the black bore as well as basic and advanced stretch goals. This is yep. the best reward level if you want to start at Venturia in full force. So this is, you don't get all the expansions for the card game that exist, but you get the core game and everything that's new that is being kickstarted here. Right. Which is, you know, that's, uh, the core game has four heroes in it. This new End of the Black War has four heroes in it. So basically you have eight different characters you can choose to play from. Now, where was it? Was it like two characters per adventure they put in or one character per adventure? How did that break down uh, with the this? previous expansions, which you, I believe are 30 bucks a piece, they each give you a new hero. So you have one new hero in each of the new expansions, okay. except for Tears of Fire, which is the Dragon one, which we've done a, a video on before, and the Arsenal, which is basically gives you a bunch of new cards that, like you can, so you can custom you do your decks for the original four heroes. Okay. Plus, it also has dice and you know uh, stuff like that. And then finally, we get down to Mike, Mister Big Spender, at count. Yeah. You get into the black board, return to into the black board, the adventure mode, play mat, and all four sets of acrylic tokens because they have acrylic instead of the regular cardboard tokens on this one. Uh, yep. Adventure, forest, threat, and blood, as well as basic and advanced threat goals. Core game upgrade is also included. Uh, this reward level is for returning players who want to update their game, or as they say, if you want to get the core upgrade tacked on there, you certainly can. Yeah. Um, then they give you a little breakdown chart here of what gets the core game, which is only really the new adventure and the barkeep, and then the other things that you can elect in, and count is the thing that gets the majority of it. And yeah, that's the thing. I gotta say, dude, like, my, my cheap... Like, mmm, mmm, that's a lot of money. But on it's, the other hand, it's honestly hit me in the gut too. But just on the other hand, myself. like when you look at the quality of the game that we've seen so far, mm -hmm. and you look at compared to like Pathfinder, like the core game is cheap. It's, yep. It adds up quick, but it's not that bad. It's like the yeah. but me when I go on a binge buying nine dollar games on Steam. Oh, that's not that bad until I make it to the checkout and realize what so it's So you spent. get 10 of them and there you go. <laughs> or 20 or 30. Or, uh, you know. Look, I... Because they're really cheap this month. I admit that I have had a problem in the past. I admit that I still have a problem, but I've learned to control it a little bit. See, my... Yeah, I... I just blow it and then I worry about the consequences later. Sometimes I do that too. But it's uh, I I love this game, so I'm supporting it fully as much as I can. I have all the other expansions, so I might as well, you know what I mean. Okay, so you have stretch goals down here. You said you thought they might have updated it today, so. Oh, uh, they did update it. The they added the the ship of lost souls actually made it in there now. Okay, so we got brass knuckles. You get a brass knuckles bonus card, which I assume is just a weapon. Yeah, it's a weapon. Uh, acrylic token intro pack, which gives you the the basic tokens there. They had a picture of it up there, which I will not be able to find now that I'm under the gun. There it is. Of course not, yeah. Where it's just, you know, 
blood points and uh, arms as strength and uh, yeah, you basically get a starter pack. Yeah, it shows you what they're like, and then you still get the regular tokens as part of the set, I believe, regardless. Yes. Um, unlocked advanced two bonus cards, alternate gender Hilbert, which. Uh, this was something that Mike and I were discussing and happened with the core game before is like they came up with alternate genders for the the main iconics like Carolyn has a female alternate that like some they, of their skills are slightly different yeah, yeah they just switch that around a little bit so that they're not you know the same character more or less but it actually upset me on Carolyn because I always like to do the the more talky thing and the female variant I forget her name like, uh, she's better at speech, so I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to start playing as a girl. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you get a basic fate point, one of eight was unlocked, then you get a basic. We have two unlocked now. Yeah, yeah, because then there's a second one. Everybody oh, yeah, it's, it's not a here. acrylic Sorry. fate point. You know, the fate points. Jumped in there a little early. <laughs> some of the tokens are nice, but I mean, like, eh. It's just a fate point. Well, remember, we really like those those the uh, fate or the when we played the card game. Remember when we did the tournament? We yeah. Really liked yeah. Those and matches. then they then they told us like they didn't have more until the Kickstarter was through. So you know, <laughs> which that comes up next. Next, that's the next Kickstarter. By the way, I'm still waiting. So it's next. It's next. Uh, they already have basic bonus card, Killer Stork. I. Yeah, uh, well, because I, I saw somewhere Facebook or one of the, the pages for Dark Eye, they were talking about the killer stork. And apparently they have these these kind of mean storks near the Hague, which I think is in Germany, right? And they, they, they kind of base it on that, So, okay. which I thought was kind of interesting all on its own, but yeah. Uh, advanced Ship of Stones, so this is only advanced... But uh, the, most, stretch goals, the yeah. most epic adventure for Aventuria yet. Play a heroic quest in the Shadowlands. Encounter trolls and kobolds on your heroic journey to the Ship of Stone. This adventure requires cards from the Ship of Lost Souls and Forest of No Return. Each backer of the barkeep and count levels receives this scenario, including more than 20 cards and a booklet. Kind of neat with like extra cards and stuff. So actually, come to think of it, yeah, that's another way to get you. That's like, nice extra stretch. That's card. how they get you, because you know you you're getting uh. That's why the stuff it here, I but like that. you go into Ship of Lost Souls is thirty bucks, which isn't bad on its own. You know, Tears of the Fire with the Dragon was the expensive one with thirty five over the other ones that are thirty, and 30. you figure. At 30 for these ones, all except for Tears of Fire, you know, with the, mm. like, that was a tough battle. And oh, that yeah, could that be a great, much tougher great, battle. Great. Like, you're you're already getting a character per box, and then one really badass encounter, and then you're still cheaper than the core game for it. So, I mean, eh. Yep. Yeah. Well, because, yeah, I think the, the end of the Black War, I think, is 50 on its own, too. Well, close to it, 49. 48 something like that which is basically the same price as the core game anyways and the return was only 20 bucks so you figure you're getting four new characters which is basically the same as the original game anyways but yeah just i think the original game gives you the uh, the rules and stuff for how everything works so, so either way so they got uh, next up, you can get a bonus Dark Eye card. Uh, Which that's that's the one I'm hoping to see. Another Acrylic Fate point, and the Advanced Ship of Stone Cobalt Compulsions. Yeah, that looks really interesting too. It all looks pretty interesting, honestly. I hope it like doubles its funding or triples or quadruples it to see what, you know, just to see the extra stuff you can get. Well, you figure the more stuff they unlock, the more stuff you get when you buy it. So, I mean, it's already got a decent amount of stuff that's, you know, getting in with the extra stuff. So, eh. and yeah, really the, the game in my experience, like dark eye is kind of intimidating to start out particularly assigning all the uh the stats yeah. but like the card game 
is a lot Pretty more accessible. It's really easy to run. It's it's very simple game, but it's, it's fun as hell. I, I, that was by far my favorite thing we did at Origins that year. Mm. That was by far my favorite thing we did. Well, and then you know, brought us to the brought us to the role playing game as well, which we all love that now too. So, just a rich setting and a rich rule set. It's it really works really well. And the the great thing is with also with the the card game. They also do little, a lot of the mini adventures in the thing are also adventures you can actually buy in the Dark Eye. So you can actually run through the card game version of the same adventure you played in the Dark Eye and vice versa. Yeah. And Which is, there's, that's kind of really neat, actually. There's definitely some flavor differences with that. But, oh, you yeah. know, if you want to pick it up and be able to do it easy instead of having to, to plot it out, because I could say after having Game Mastered that, like, they're they're going to give you the framework and you're responsible for filling it in, which is both a curse and a blessing. And well, it's, to, to a certain extent, the card game is simplified, so it doesn't take as long. Well, Pathfinder, which I was used to, kind of held your hand a lot more than Dark Eye does. It's oh, like, yeah, you here's the stuff, <laughs> go, you know what to do. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Oh, but now that you've, now that you've DM'd it a few times, you, you know, you're getting better at adjusting on the fly for what you need to do. Yeah, which was probably just, just the practice. hardest skill to learn. Oh, yeah. Just a matter of practice and doing it. And once you, you know, I mean, some people never get the hang of it, but you did you did great. I really enjoyed your campaign, so there you go. <clears throat> All right, Mike. We're just over much, 16 minutes. Uh, I think that's pretty much covering what we needed to cover for this episode anyways. Yeah. Uh, in the future, we're going to try to put out, you know, uh, try to get a little more regular than what we've been doing. We have a little bit more free time on our hands now, at least to a certain degree. <laughs> but we're going to try to put out some more, more videos. Still have another car, car. Uh, what would, would we call it? Car cast video. Uh, yes, the. Just, uh, just like, it just needed the blind it. sense car cast that like I've been afraid to finish because the, uh, the Windows 10 updates have had more bugs oh, coming towards them. So, like I know my computer won't blow up, but. Whenever they told me that your home folder may disappear in certain settings, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to chance that. As as you can maybe see on the screen, I'm in Linux right now. Because <laughs> yeah. I had consequently been doing that at the same time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and not boot into Windows until all this blows over. <laughs> yeah, I'm a shill. I'm still working with Windows. <laughs> of course, my, my uh, you know blind-friendly software works better on Windows, unfortunately. Yeah, well... I've been I mean, poking that's... into that for you, but I mean, like, yeah, it's there. I'm I'm really at that point where it's like the inconvenience of putting up with Microsoft's crap is only a smidge more than the inconvenience of having to configure everything for myself in Linux, and I actually yeah. like configuring everything for myself. So, yeah, you see, that's that's the difference between you. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I fight with I fight with Windows because I recently just went from seven to ten and. It was not a pretty first week, let me tell you. But anyways, we digress. Uh, we probably should sign off now and you know, say adios to you listeners out there. If you're still out there, please, please still be out there. Uh, Pledge but, yeah. to the Kickstarter so we can have more stuff. Pretty much, yeah. More stuff. <laughs> more stuff is better. <laughs> anyways, guys, I think that's enough for us tonight. Adios. Later. The theme music used for this podcast... Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, it's been a minute since I've did one of these things, so, you know, I almost forgot the outro bit, but I, I got you covered. It's been rough. So, we're going to get back on track, eventually, some point, somehow. You know, I'm mainly going to shift blame to Mike from here on. So, um, it's his podcast, he needs to tell me when we're recording it, and you can email him. We need to record more often, like anytime you want an episode, email Valantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X, at gmail.com. That'll show Mike. Yeah, I'm not the slacker here. It's totally Mike.